Is it rolling? All right, cool. Hello everyone. Welcome to our how-to presentation on how to win big on race day. So our question for this presentation is, can we predict who's gonna be the winner of a race based on historical information and information leading up to a race? And you guys might be asking, well, why do we need to know this? Well, racing is a lucrative sport where a lot of gambling can happen. And if you know who's gonna win and the proper statistics behind uh, racing, you can win some serious money. So what race are we talking about? We're talking about Formula One. Formula One is considered to be the world's pinnacle of motorsport racing. The Formula One calendar has races all over the world from Australia to China to Brazil. And this past weekend, they were actually in Montreal, Canada. Um, Formula One cars are considered to be the most advanced cars in the entire world. Millions of dollars a year are going, gone into developing these cars to make them technologically perfect. As you can see, there are many complications to these cars in this picture over here. So this is what a typical F1 track uh, looks like. As you can see, there are many different kind of apexes, straights, corners that really challenges the car and the driver. Before we really dive down into how can we predict, there's some variables we do need to consider that we cannot control, such as team strategy. And luckily for us, team strategies for most of the race teams are pretty linear, such as pit stops, tires, racing lines. I mean, they can't really get too creative with this stuff from team to team. But experts have suggested that your start position can heavily influence uh, the outcome of a race. And start position is determined by qualifying Saturday. So there are some hiccups that, you know, we can't really account for looking at just what is in a race. And things are like that are such as rain, uh, sometimes snow in the Russian Grand Prix that happened, crashes, traffic, and that really boils down to the drivers. And these skillful drivers have been training their whole lives to uh, maneuver these cars and to get behind a Formula One car and win Grand Prix. Having said that, uh, before we dive into our deep analysis into it, I wanted to get some terminology out of the way. So when I say pole position, that means you start in the first position at the start line. When I say the grid, that's just the way that they order the cars at the start line from first to 22nd, which is the number of cars that are in a Formula One Grand Prix. Q1, Q2, and Q3 means that uh, the starters will be Q1 is the person starting in first position, Q2 second, Q3 third. Podium is uh, earning the final positions either one second or third at the end of the race. Now, grid positions. Like I said, qualifying is a big deal. And I wanted to see how much it was a big deal by. So I correlated all of the start positions with the history of the sports. And this is the number of wins that were won in each spot. And as you can see, the people who started in first position won 410 times. Second, 233 3, 119. After that, it drops significantly. So I took the top three numbers, considering they're in the hundreds, and found what percentage they make up of. And I found that 78% of wins were won from these top three positions. Having said that, I went through each year, and I did com uh, a list compilation of uh, each qualifying spot and where they ended up. At Q1, 64% of people who started in Q1 uh, won. Uh, 31 at Q2, 5 at Q3. Uh, it's a key to mention that Lewis Hamilton actually won that year. 2016, again, 62% won at Q1, 24 won at Q2, 9% won at Q3. In 2017, 55% won at Q1, 20% won at Q2, uh, 15 won at Q3, and Hamilton again won that year. And this year, although it is not yet finished, we're only midway through, 50% won at Q1, 16% at Q2, uh, and 3% at six, uh, three, 16% at Q3. And Hamilton is currently in the lead. So as we can see in these past four years, Q1 has had 50% or higher, which is huge. So I took those uh, Q1 wins and I correlated them with the year and made this correlation graph. Now I want to see how well they correlate because they can show consistency. And one would be a perfect correlation. And we have a 0.96, that is 0 0.04 off of perfect. So having said that, we can say that this is an extremely strong correlation and we can move on to our analysis. So bringing it all together, never bet on a driver that isn't Q1, Q2, or Q3. 
these drivers have statistically have the highest percent chance of winning. Um, drivers will have in Q1 will have a 50% chance or higher uh, of outcome of winning. Right now, Lewis Hamilton has the highest confidence level as he has one of the highest number of championships in the entire grid. So he's a strong bet to play on. So if you have Lewis Hamilton sitting on Q1 right before a race, you should probably bet on him. And if he's not in Q1 and someone else is in Q1, you should probably still bet on him too because they still have 50% chance higher or more. Thank you guys for the presentation. I hope you guys found it useful. Here are a list of some of my resources. Um, a lot of the data I compiled was compiled by myself. So uh, that's, that's sort of my work. Again, I'd like to thank you guys and hope you found this video useful.